Hi guys, my name is Hillary with Barbell Acres and today I'm bringing to you um, how we make our chicken feed and how I ferment our chicken feed as well. So we got chickens a year ago at this point. Um, yeah, I think it's been a year. And I've been doing this um, really since after they were chicks. So we started making our own chicken feed. I did a lot of research on uh, the best kinds. Uh, what I was finding is um, one bag was it was very expensive for a like, corn and soy free all organic feed. Um, so because I'm feeding this to my children, I wanted to make sure that this is you know their eggs are going to be the best quality I can get. So mostly we give them food scraps. That's the, their first meal of the day, and then they're on fresh grass because we move their tractor around um, our yard. Just kind of collect our food throughout the day. Um, you know, I, I give them, I bring them out probably seven to their tractor, give them the scraps from the, the previous day, and then we just start collecting them again. So we give them back their eggshells, we give them just food that my kids, you know, flop on the floor, uh, things that we don't finish, carrot peels, and, and just different things. So we give them all that, and that's typically a pretty good amount um, every morning and then I only give them feed at night. So I, I don't really supplement with a lot of feed anyway, um, but this is what we do them to get them back into the coop each night, we give them feed. And because I have 11 now, they, they do require more feed, but um, I found that fermenting it makes it stretch a little bit longer. Um, so I think this is probably one of the more cost efficient way to do this, um, to feed your animals with all organic options that are corn and soy free. So I have going into this, I have organic flax, I have organic barley, I have organic chicken meat, I have oyster shells, that's a small bag, and then I have um, organic field peas, so I think that should be five, yeah, five bags. Um, so that has been good for them. I, I haven't, when I was first doing research, I was pretty overwhelmed just because I was finding a lot of things about like the protein content, it's supposed to be, you know, made up of these different macronutrients, and I was like, okay, how would we know that, basically? And I didn't, I was pretty determined not to buy my own um, feed. So I kind of came up with this recipe. Um, I get these all these ingredients from Azure Standard. So we're gonna mix them now. So my husband is gonna open the bags while, but he basically, how we mix it, we have a big trash can. It's um, like an outdoor trash can. Um, and he basically pours in a little bit at a time. I think we have, what, we have five bags. Um, how many bags? Five. Yeah, we have five bags. One of them is oyster shells, so it's a very small bag. But, uh, so he basically pours a little bit at a time, mixes it by hand, and then kind of keeps going. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So what's that, the barley? Yeah, so that's barley. You want me to talk about it? The wheat. Ah, peas. Shell. And flax. And then since the bin's so big, I kind of get in there, mix it up. So then it's all incorporated. That's kind of what it looks like. We'll do it again. Golden flax seeds, organic chicken wheat, organic whole barley, oyster shells, and then I have organic wild peas, field peas. And these are 50 pound ba bags, uh, 10 pounds, this is 45, 50 pounds, and 25 pounds, the flax seeds. 
So that's how we mix the feed. Um, now I'm going to go about how, I'm gonna show you how I soak and sprout my chicken feed. Um, so I, this is not a necessary step by any means. I actually just started doing this probably three months ago. So it's, it's not, you can definitely give the feed directly to them. I do think they eat more when you give that feed directly to them. And I think this will help um, our bodies or the chicken's bodies break down um, the nutrients a little bit more and the nutrients are a little bit easier for them to uh, access, I guess. Um, so I've started to, the research I've done, I started to soak and sprout my grains. Um, it kind of makes sense because I was, I was finding, oh, we should soak, soak and sprout our grains ourselves. Um, so it probably works the same for animals as well. Um, so this is also super simple. I don't feel like I'm giving up a lot of time by doing this. It's not that big of a deal or that much more of an extra step. Um, so basically what I do, these are one gallon mason jars. So I just put enough feed for probably three days um, in here. And then I just cover it with uh, filtered water. It's not necessarily my Berkey water, it's just the fridge water, but something that isn't chlorinated. And I just loosely cover it. And as it sits, you can see that it will start to bubble up slightly. It's going to focus. But there's, there's definitely some bubbles on top. Um, and yeah, it's, it's fermenting. And um, you will need to add more water as you go. And I basically let it sit on the counter. Um, so I can, you can start to give it to them basically after one day and it'll have some of those benefits, those probiotic benefits, but typically I like to let it sit for three days and you kind of have to time it right. So if you want to give it to them every day, um, you basically like, you don't want to start at all, like have a huge batch because their potential is to grow mold and things. I have had that happen. So I like to just let it sit under a week, I would say is good and then just kind of be done with it and then move on. So I start it typically three times throughout the week. So like a Monday, a Wednesday, and then like a, a Friday. And that typically is good for enough feed um, to, to feed them all week with the lacto-fermented feed. So just some benefits to it is it can improve their digestion and it, it adds probiotics to the feed. To the feed. Um, so that will help their gut. I believe it gives us healthier eggs. Um, I also think you don't have to give them as much uh, just because um, it almost, because of the water absorption, it, they tend to eat less of it. So I, I feel like there's really no downside in doing it. Um, it just gets it's healthier for them. I think it, I've even read that it can help um, bacteria, like lessen bacteria to grow in the feed. Um, so I found that, that it works best uh, for us and I like doing that. So that is it, I'm gonna wrap up this here. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below, but that is just how we mix our feed, where I source my feed, and um, like I said, I only give it to them once a day, so this isn't their main source of food. Um, they kind of salvage for their food in the grass, and my food scraps are another uh, basically big meal that they eat. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Um, and yeah, thank you for so much for being here. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and again, have a great day.